All right, super. Thank you so much uh, for the warm introduction and the opportunity to connect with this uh, audience here. Uh, very thankful um, to Exchange for Media as well as the sponsors uh, for the event. Pleasure to be talking to you this afternoon. It's uh, the post-lunch slot. I'm hoping that uh, I am able to at least maintain the energy, if not add to it. I come from Wow Skin Science India. A quick introduction before this. I've had a career in e-commerce with Amazon and with Unilever in FMCG. Um, today, I'd like to take you through what it means to be building a brand with a digital DNA. Uh, wow has been around. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with it. Uh, it's a relatively small brand when we look at the wider FMCG, but we hope to change that uh, very, very soon. Uh, the brief agenda I've laid out uh, in the 15 odd minutes we'll spend on this is what's the context in which we operate. The second is what's been the history of the brand. The third is a quick snippet of what do we kind of do day to day and, and it gives you a flavor of how you build a brand not TV backward, not offline backward, but online backward from a very different consumer. And lastly, just summary of what WOW kind of you know, stands for and what do we do uh, to be where we are. As I said, I'd like to start with context. How many of you recognize that logo on the top uh, left side? Yeah. So if you just remember, there was a time that there was only one channel. And there were those many people who could afford to advertise on that channel. And then equally those many few people who could afford to distribute in those outlets that we see. Come to 1990s, early 2000s, and the logos changed to that. Uh, you had the emergence of a new media. The consumer was exposed to different trends. And this was not the same consumer because they wanted more. They wanted more variety. They wanted more value. And then you see the distribution changing. You see the likes of Big Bazaar emerging in 2001, DMART in 2002. This changed the kind of brands that the consumers were offered, but equally so what the consumers wanted. We are living through the third transitional era where we are seeing media consumption patterns change dramatically. A consumer sitting in Ghaziabad is as aware of what's happening in Brazil or US in terms of trends on TikTok or Facebook or Instagram. Of course, India itself has a very vibrant creator community, uh, getting those trends to India, exposing them to consumers. And there is demand. There is demand for more. India has the lowest per capita consumption of beauty and personal care. And that kind of reflects in the way new channels have grown, whether it be a Nike or an Amazon or a Flipkart. And yeah, Bao is present everywhere. Yeah. So we believe that we will see emergence of a new clutch of FMCG brands. We saw the likes of legacy players, uh, you know, distribution-led large behemoths. Then we saw the MNCs coming into play somewhere towards mid-1990s. And today we see an emergence of a completely new set of digital uh, you know, first brands. With that, what is WOW today? So WOW is, uh, of course, online forward. Uh, we, we, we are born out of the digital platforms, whether it be media or commerce. But in the brief five-year history that we've got, we have created an array of category bestsellers. And when I say bestsellers, I mean it with all due respect online. Offline is a completely different ballgame. Uh, but whether it be beauty and personal care, or whether it be health and personal care, we are in both. So WOW Life Science is a brand that sells more towards health, and then beauty is WOW Skin Science. We are present across all offline and online beauty and wellness retailers. And we are present in the US. We are listed in Walmart across 3,000 stores. And we sell across a couple of chains there as well, apart from Amazon.com, which is a very, very big channel for us. So a brief history of WOW. This was a brand that had a D2C website, I think, before the word D2C became D2C. Um, we were trying to do commerce back in 2014 uh, from uh, the brand's website. However, the big shift happened when the marketplaces took over. So 2015 is when India saw Flipkart and Amazon really scale up. And that's when WOW really kind of rode that wave. Uh, come to 2016, we got into beauty with our first hero product, which is the apple cider vinegar shampoo. Uh, quick, interesting nugget of um, insight there. You know, we actually were selling apple cider vinegar, right, which is a food product. And when we saw reviews, and that's where the consumer centricity comes from, which is we saw reviews and consumer calls that said that, listen, we use this on our, uh, on our hair. Could you package this in a shampoo? And that's when the shampoo was born. Uh, and from there on to today, uh, WOW is across uh, both US and India, uh, across all online marketplaces. In fact, we have evolved as a brand and as, a, as an organization. We are not only present in online, but we are also expanding into offline in a very measured way. Only the top outlets where beauty is a rele the relevant consumer shops. Right? We want to be where the consumers are. At the same time, 10 plus countries, uh, we are seeing success for the mix that started from India and is going to the Western world 
and still finding relevance. And that's rare for an Indian brand. So we are happy, we are pleased with the consumer traction it gets. Um, we also operate our own tech platform. So we have our own website, our app. Uh, that's almost like a separate company within the company. We directly sell to consumers, we ship to them, we learn about them, we get signals. Our, our networks are, are kind of completely embedded with Facebook, with Google. So we are able to read across all of these different consumer cohorts on, on what the reaction to our marketing is. What does it mean when I say marketing digital first, right? I just want to give you a quick snippet and I won't kind of go through all the detailing there, but to give you a sense of how marketing works. And I come from a traditional FMCG background, spent close to 10 years, 13 years in, in, in FMCG old world. Um, it's a very different world out there when I look at marketing from a digital only lens. There is full funnel and full funnel doesn't go away. There is awareness, there is consideration, there is trials. Those basics don't change. But at the same time, the way we reach to consumers, the relevant set of consumers changes dramatically. Today, we are able to reach probably more consumers through Facebook or through YouTube than we could theoretically through TV. And that's a very interesting thing because the kind of consumers we want to go to are more available on Facebook or a Google than they are, let's say, with traditional TV. And maybe that will change in the, in the medium term, but in the short term, we don't see that changing dramatically. In fact, we see a lot more um, of, of uh, increase of penetration of the digital media, giving us a larger and larger addressable consumer cohort. The second thing, which is, again, an early wave in India, now, of course, it's become very, very large, is the role of a creator. A creator is essentially what you could label as an influencer, but there are varieties of creators, not necessarily influencers. Uh, we work with you know, hundreds of them right from our inception, and they've really given us a foundation on which the brand has credibility. Uh, you could argue that a celebrity does the same thing from a different media structure, but when you look at you know, the power of micro-influencers and micro-creators, we have really seen value out of it. The third is, because we have control over the full funnel, which means awareness, consideration, and trial, just zoom out and think about a TV ad, right? You've got a TV ad, you know, you kind of put it onto TV, then you hope that people will register it. Then you wait to see if they go out and really kind of purchase it in their next purchase cycle. And there is no way you can close loop this feedback system. The advantage of digital is there is a direct feedback mechanism available. You're able to measure who saw your ad, did they go out, did they really purchase, because you have your own commerce platform as well. So you can actually measure how many people who saw your ad, clicked it, came to your website, purchased it, went back. Uh, you could remarket them, you could cross-sell, upsell. You can again measure if they are repeating. This is a very, very different way of marketing because imagine if you were able to go and measure how many people saw your TV ad and ran out and bought your shampoo. Not that easy, right? It takes a lot of time to get that data. Uh, the advantage of uh, an online system is you get this. However, again, this is a factor of where you start. As you evolve, you, you, we see a very different you know, landscape emerge uh, where there will be, and I'll talk about it a bit later, a mix of online and offline, and brands will kind of grow into that. Lastly, and this is again very interesting, um, we, we are able to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with our consumers, and technology enables this today to do this at scale. So when you shop on our website, and you know, you've kind of, uh, if you shop on an average three, you know, once in three months, and you miss one trip, we will have a one-on-one -on -one, you know, message to you to remind you that, hey, there is a purchase waiting for you, or there is a special incentive. And that helps us calibrate how we promote, how we incentivize uh, trials and repeats, uh, both in terms of our messaging, because we are able to literally show a different ad to a repeater versus a new consumer, uh, but equally so in terms of reminding you or just in terms of CRM, you know, if, you, if you have questions about the product, if you want to learn more, there are direct channels where you can talk to the consumers one-on-one. -on -one. Imagine doing this to millions of consumers simultaneously every day. And that's the commerce platform and, and the power of, of what connects us in terms of digital media. These are the front ends. This is what probably you know, we see as outcomes. But if I go to what are the capabilities that allow us to do this, the first one is we, we leverage a lot of the technology that, that comes in from digital media and commerce platforms, apart from, of course, building our own. Uh, what it means is that the feedback loop I, talk, uh, loop I talked about is something that doesn't come easy. I mean, we are very thankful to our partners who have these mechanisms built into their media platforms to be able to do this day in and day out, um, to the extent that we, at, at any given point of time, might be running 500 plus campaigns. Right? It's unthinkable. I mean, as a brand manager, if you tell me to run three campaigns, uh, you know, at the same time, I would start kind of counting what is the over, you know, what is the over delivery of GRP, spillover, etc. But here you are running 300 exclusive campaigns, and you're able to do that today. Um, the second is measurement. 
Now, measurement has also evolved. You're able to do control A-B tests, not just on your platform, but on partner platforms. Now, what does this mean? You know, a YouTube or a Google, you know, or a, or a Facebook, you're able to do brand lift studies for upper funnel outcomes, whether it is awareness lift, consideration lift. We use this extensively. Uh, equally so, there is lower funnel conversion that you get to measure. Again, the power of feedback loops, where you are able to see whether a new consumer came in, shopped, how many times, what did they buy, how many pages did they visit. There's a lot of data there. And data becomes, therefore, a way to look at the consumer in a much more granular way, almost personalized manner. The third is that when you evolve this playbook and once you've got this engine created, you are able to then kind of use it for newer and newer brands. So what we learned with Wow Skin Science was deployed on Wow Life Science and we saw the success in terms of how it changed uh, you know, its rankings on Amazon. And these are things that you're able to monitor daily you know, with the kind of data that flows in. But these are repeatable playbooks. It tells you that, okay, if this works here, it should work. And yes, it did work in the US and therefore the same playbook can be repeated in new context and it typically works out. And the last bit, which is we are a product company at the end of the day. We are not a tech company. We are a tech-enabled company. We, we do sell shampoos. We, we sell skincare, right? For us, uh, what, what also helps is to be very agile and to be asset light. We are not here to lock ourselves in a technology where you, know, you, you make like billions of tons of shampoo. No. We work with a lot of our partners who work very closely with us um, to not only scout for what consumer niches are underserved, but equally so look at how do we manufacture them in the lowest cost at the same time lowest order quantity. This allows us to cycle very quickly through innovations. So if an average FMCG brand launches X SKUs, and I will leave X open because different brands have different trajectories, but typically you, know, you don't really look at a brand launching 20 plus SKUs in a, in a year, uh, we would be looking at launching 100. 120, and, and we, we will look at what sells, what doesn't, very quickly be able to kind of take a, a call, uh, scale what works, downscale what doesn't. This ability is important to us because it allows us to focus on what we do best, which is looking at the consumer, looking at marketing, looking at our data. With this, just a quick snippet of a con couple of consumer-facing assets that we tend to use, and I'll just briefly talk to them. On the left, what you see is uh, more of our brand communication. And, and by brand, I mean there is largely a premise, there is a context, there's a benefit, there's a product in that context. Uh, the objectives, the reach and frequency, awareness is what we measure. Um, after that, we are able to use some of these assets into a more of a um, immediate, let's say, performance marketing, if I would label it very, very broadly, uh, platform. And, and there you get into consideration. You're able to activate, you're able to offer very different hooks you are able to talk to the consumer to almost personalize what hooks work better for each consumer and look at these cohorts, and that's the middle section. And then comes a lot of conversion and loyalty, which is remarketing, which is about uh, not just incentivizing trials, which is what you would do typically through a price off in the erstwhile, let's say, modern trade system, but you do it dynamically. I mean, I could give a coupon to each one of you, and each one of your coupons could have a different value. Right? And you wouldn't know what the other consumer is buying it at. Right? So this is possible today because you're able to hyper-segment, look at consumer cohorts with that kind of granularity. And of course, uh, we extensively use the shopping you know, uh, remarketing uh, platforms uh, with all the digital partners that we work with. Uh, and some of those snippets are what you see over here. These are called catalog ads. We tend to use it a lot. But once you've seen the product, once you like it, once you've considered it, you've probably visited our website once or twice you will find some of them uh, following you in your Facebook re, you know, uh, feeds. Hopefully not uh, irritating you, but yeah, at some point, uh, hoping that you convert. Uh, that's the full funnel in front of a consumer. What I talked about earlier was more of the background in which we operate these. And therefore, if I look at how we look at building a brand with a digital DNA, is that we don't start thinking TV backwards. We don't start thinking distribution backwards. We first start thinking consumer backwards in terms of what are the niches which are underserved, uh, where legacy brands do not completely or rather you know, in, a, in a satisfactory manner cover the niche or it might be too small for them, which is where we would be very interested in serving that consumer niche. Then looking at how do you reach out to the consumer through, a, as I said, full funnel approach, right from awareness down to consideration, down to conversion, all of it largely through an online first approach. Equally so, uh, evolving from that to running a very calibrated offline uh, um, uh, you know, distribution channel where we are building offline as we speak 
and very interestingly uh, i you know always had a mental block myself saying you know if you want to be in offline you got to go tv very interestingly when you do an influencer campaign in a very pointed scalable manner in a certain geography you see offline sales change now there is something happening here the consumer is the same they are looking at tv they are looking at digital it's not like the consumer is only watching tv or only looking at instagram there is a common consumer this consumer shops online but they also shop offline so if you are present where the consumer expects you you are able to cater to her need and service that demand that you create through your full funnel advertising lastly innovation is a big part of where we are we we are able to handle a much higher complexity because our supply chain doesn't work the same way uh, and therefore if you look at it from 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 a brand lens the ability to be able to innovate quickly try out ideas and then weed out the failures uh, in in an accelerated manner is a crucial capability that you would have at, at least in the cpg domain what i speak here is a lot more cpg maybe fashion but doesn't extend beyond that um, large lastly our big advantage or rather what we are grateful for but equally so very focused on building is uh, the ability to sell to the consumer directly uh, now this is where the word d2c kind of comes into play uh, it's not to say d2c is the only way to sell it will never be you know, you can't build a large brand by saying i'm only going to sell on my website um, but it does give you signals it gives you the the ability to look at insights data from a much more granular manner than uh, looking at a broad spray and pray approach and that's where we leverage our d2c platforms in a big way uh, we are we are grateful again for the kind of traffic we receive for the kind of scale we have been able to operate it at um, and we intend to use these playbooks you know as we enter newer categories or newer brands uh, so that in sum is wow this is typically how my ad would look like when you are browsing facebook i don't know if i have bothered you with this uh, in your uh, feeds uh, but yes discovery through online media access through omni channel distribution largely e-commerce first and designed for agile fast fail innovations is the way we design wow skin science uh, that's about it from my end um, i'm hoping that i kind of adhere to the brief of 15 minutes uh, and that's it thank you any questions happy to take um, yeah thank you